In this lecture, we're going to talk about uh, we're going to use centripetal acceleration um, and the law of gravity to talk about uh, GPS satellites. Okay, so uh, GPS satellites. Basically, you have all these satellites with uh, radio transmitters and extremely uh, accurate clocks going around the earth and they cover up uh, and so then basically you take your GPS receiver outside and it picks up the satellites you put in your car and it tells you where on the surface of the earth you are so you have these satellites in orbit around the earth now what they have decided upon, and I don't know, I wasn't part of the decision decision making process, was the period of the satellites they wanted to be 12 hours. So twice, so basically it orbits twice, each satellite orbits twice per day. Okay, so period that's a this is probably the first time that we've used the word period but this is uh, time for one complete cycle period is the time for one complete cycle and we're gonna just uh, right off the bat throw it in there of uh, 12 hours times 3600 Second, so it's uh, 4.32 times 10 to the fourth seconds is going to be t. Okay, so now we have to start doing some thinking here. We have an orbit that's a circle. We'll call it a circle, and it's going to have some radius r, and it's going to have some circumference 2 pi r. And so, and and so basically, it's going to, and it's going to have some period right there. And so we're going to say that the velocity is going to be the distance two pi r divided by the time. So velocity is two time is the circumference of the orbit divided by the time that it takes to go through the orbit. Okay, now we know that our centripetal force FC is mv squared over r. So we're going to know that our centripetal force is going to be m times 2 pi r over t, all of that squared, divided by r. So now cleaning that up, we're going to say that our force centripetal is going to be m times, times 4 pi squared r squared over r t squared we got some cancellation there, so our force centripetal is going to be m 4 pi squared r over t squared. Okay, now, so that's, that's a funky equation for our centripetal force. Now what's causing that centripetal force? Because centripetal force is not a force all on its own. It's got to, there's got to be a real force there that provides force centripetal. Well, what causes a satellite to go around the Earth? Think about that one for a second. What causes it to be attracted to the Earth is gravity. And we just learned that the force due to gravity is going to be G M1 M2 over r squared. Okay, so we know that our force gravity is what is causing that centripetal force. 
Force gravity is the centripetal force for a satellite going around the Earth. So we can set these two equations equal to each other. And we have a little bit of can so first off we got some masses. So we're gonna cancel some masses, but what mass canceled? The mass that that mass there was the mass of the satellite. So that mass there has got to be the mass of the satellite. So the mass of satellite. And this, this brings us back to our good old thing of which one drops first. Which one, which one falls towards Earth faster? The heavier object or the lighter object? And the answer is neither. The answer is that all objects accelerate towards the center of the Earth at the same rate. Okay. So now we can rearrange this. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to throw it into this way. I'm going to say uh, G M Earth divided by, or times, uh, divided by 4 pi squared is equal to R, R cubed over t squared. Okay, now this is something that Kepler also came up with. So that's a really, really important part of what Kepler came up with. The r cubed over t squared thing, and it just comes out of this equation. Well, ultimately I want to solve for r. Okay, so I want to say that r cubed is equal to g m earth t squared over 4 pi squared. So r is going to be the cube root 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th newton meter squared per kilogram squared the mass of the Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. I'm going to um, actually just do this over on another sheet of paper so that I don't run out of room. Okay. So my R is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th Newton's meter squared per kilogram squared. My mass of the Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. My time was for a 12 hour orbit 4.32 times 10 to the 4th seconds. And now that's got to get squared divided by 4 and divided by pi squared and then I'm going to take that all to the cube root. So, I'm throwing it all on my calculator. Uh, probably going to set it up. Well, I'll have to just sort of go through it. Okay, open a big set of parentheses. Now I do 6.67 second EE negative 11 times 5.98 second EE 24 times 4.32 second EE 4 and then I've got to square that number divided by 4 divided by pi squared close the parentheses, raise it 
to the one-third power and I get R is going to be 2.66 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 meters. <clears throat> okay, so that's the radius of the orbit of the GPS satellites.